Hey, what's going on everybody? It's Tyler here, and today we're going to continue where we left off and learn how to interact with the renderer process inside of Electron. So, let's get started. Now, in the last episode, we created a basic window, and I'll actually uh, start that right now. And if you see, every time we want to make a change to our window, we actually have to um, restart the application, hit Control C, and type in npm start again. Now, there's actually a package that solves this problem for us, and it's called Electron Reload. And I already have it installed, but uh, I'll just redo it. And as you can see, Electron Reload version 1.5 is what I'm using. And what this allows us to do is hot reload our, our Electron app, so we don't have to keep closing it and restarting it. Now, if you want to actually enable it and follow along with me, um, go into the index.js file and just type in require. So we're going to require the module electron dash reload. And the initial constructor function is going to type a directory name. And that is it. And this will allow hot uh, reloading, hot reloading for the application. Perfect. And now if we restart. So it shows that nothing's in here, but if I put in here like CPU and core counts and no need to refresh there, you can see it updates in real time. So I just figured I would show that since I'm going to be using that the rest of the series. Now let's actually work with the renderer process. Now inside this index.html, I want to display our CPU name and how many cores we have. And we'll elaborate on this further building out natural system information app. So right now, um, in traditional JavaScript, to include a script, we're going to do script with a source attribute. And I'm going to call it renderer, render.js, render.js. And I'm going to create that file now, renderer. JS. And inside this file, um, if we actually uh, open this app and we see toggle the developer tools, renderer, R E N D E R E R dot JS. Let me make sure I type that right. Dot slash render dot JS. There we go. Ah, there it is. Beautiful. So if we actually toggle the developer tools and in here I just do alerts. Uh, Hello. As you can see, we get the alert. Hello. Now, just like we'd expect. Now, what if I want to say um, use the OS module that comes with Electron? So we can do OS equals require OS. Now, this is a native Electron or a node. So it shouldn't work inside of a renderer process. I mean, again, this is just like running Node or on JavaScript inside of your browser. And just as we expect, require is not defined. And that is, again, because this um, JavaScript file isn't running like Node code. It's running um, DOM. It's running code that can access like the DOM and things like that. But say we want to be able to access the DOM and still run Node code. And what we can do is we can come into where we created our window and pass in something called web preferences. And in here, um, this will allow us to enable and disable specific features for our browser window. And one of them is node integration, which I'm going to set to true. It's false by default. And that is because these two commands we're going to put are um, not very safe by default. So in a future episode, I will show you how we can actually um, incorporate this type of features without actually compromising security. But for now, I'm going to just kind of show you how we can actually get started. And this is true by defaults. Now, when we change anything in this file, the index.js file, we do actually have to restart the app. But uh, we shouldn't have to do that very often. And one last thing I actually want to show is how we can toggle these developer tools by default. So if we come down here and type in window.webcontents.dot 
open developer tools and this is a function that will do as it sounds it'll just open up the developer tools so if we type in npm start again we see the developer tools are pre-opens when we come in and just like that our error also went away for requiring os we could also like const fs is equal to require file system and we have access oh my we have access to all of those things so in here if i do const cpu and set it equal to os.cpus which should get an array of all the cpus on our system um, we should see if i do console.log cpus we get 12 um, individual objects inside this array that contain information about my CPU, which I do have a Ryzen 5 2600. And I can kind of verify that over here. A Ryzen 5 2600 with three, four by three um, cores. So perfect. If I want to actually display this stuff though inside the app, like let's say right here, I want to actually show my CPU name, you know, we can do that using normal JavaScript. So I can do const uh, CPU name is equal to documents dot get element by a D. And in here I called it CPU name. And const uh, CPU cores. And I can set that equal to document dot get element by a D. I think I set it to cores. I did. And in here, I can do um, CPU course dot inner text and set it equal to a string. And I'm going to do core uh, available. And I'm going to pass in CPUs dot length. And I could also do CPU uh, name dot inner text and set this equal to CPU and pass in CPUs. I'm just going to pick a random index and I think it's dot model. Yeah, it is. Perfect. And just like that, uh, we should see this right here. I have a CPU that's a Ryzen 5 2600 and I have 12 cores at my disposal. Now, one last thing I'll show you since this is that is that again this is a very insecure um, thing for example if I was a um, someone like an exploiter trying to actually get into your application uh, we could we do have access to node.js uh, variables and also modules and other code so I could I do have access to your file system again so inside of electron um, usually this is sandboxed by default this renderer process which means for us to actually get access to that stuff we have to explicitly allow specific functions but again just for the tutorial series and all that we are going to just keep it like this for now and in a later episode we'll actually um, go over how to isolate specific functions um, and things like that but until then, that is all for the renderer process. Um, I showed that we can use Node.js inside of Electron's renderer process and kind of manipulate the DOM using some of this information. In the next episode, we're going to actually be working with something called the IPC um, to communicate back and forth between these processes. So we can actually communicate between the index file and the renderer file since again these are in totally different processes and I'll elaborate on that further.